I also wanted to bring up one other point. Salt. Salt is really huge. If you live in a coastal area and you can make salt, that's awesome. Um, if you can pack your meat in salt, you can actually take raw meat, and if you have enough salt, you can just pack it in it, and it's preserved at room temperature indefinitely. Um, so I wanted to show you something here. This little uh, jar here is made, or is, rather is full of sea salt, which was my last, what's left of my last batch of salt that I made from the coast. Uh, I live on an island, so I'm, I'm surrounded by salt water. That's a little, that's about 750 milliliters of, uh, or 250 milliliters of, um, of salt. It's about a cup of salt. That all came out of one gallon of water. You can go out with a milk jug, fill it up with water, put it in a low flat dish. I like to use like a glass casserole dish. Salt's very corrosive, so metal might not be a good option. Um, and I don't like to eat out of plastic, so I don't use plastic, but a glass casserole dish, you pour a gallon of water into that and then put it on a low heat. Like, you know, I, I generally have a wood stove in my home. I'm always simmering bones and broths and stuff on it, but I can put that casserole dish on there, dry out a gallon of water. You can do it in like a day or two. And, um, and then you, it it'll dries up, crystallizes, and you end up with a bunch of salt. I just kind of scrape the thing out, move it around, so I've gotten crystals that are that are usable. This is coarser than I usually do it, but it's, it's great. It's super good for curing meat, um, and it's it's worth doing. I, I do it to make my salt rather than even though it's almost free at the grocery store. This is really good salt. Um, real sea salt is only about 89% sodium chloride, that, that quote-unquote salt. The rest of it is a bunch of other micronutrients and minerals that we need in our diet. Um, barring having like a glass casserole dish, you can use something like I have down here. This is a bowl, an alder bowl that I actually um, carved a couple of years ago. Maybe um, maybe this is all you have access to. Um, this is the first bowl I ever carved, so it's not, you know, it's not so nice a condition that I'm, it's really precious to me. Um, and salt would uh, probably affect this thing in a lot of ways. It would definitely crystallize in the wood and everything, so it might not be a good eating bowl in it. But for a survival situation, this thing would, could conceivably produce, uh, that's, you know, a half gallon of water in volume right there, so that's a half a cup of salt. And you can do stones in your fire where you heat up um, nice round stones, get them red hot, Fill this thing full of water, put the stones in the water, and get it boiling, and just periodically put a new hot stone in there and dry all that water out of there. It's going to be a, a lot more work, but it'll work. And uh, there's a certain point where the water is going to get so salty that you might just use it as a marinade. You don't need to get the, the crystalline form in order to preserve meat, especially if you're going to, you know, soak the meat and then hang it to dry, and it's going to it's going to continue to dry off um, while you're smoking it. So a thing like a bowl or a cook pot, a cook pot might be a little too valuable to, to um, designate for that sort of a task, but um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of options. Salt's a valuable thing. In this area, the right time of year, in the, if it happens to be summertime, you can actually pick salt right off the rocks where it's been splashed up onto the shore. Water splashes up, trickles down the rocks, and dries off. And you'll find salt crystals. You can you can collect it um, by the handful, actually. And uh, I know that's uh, really commonly done in Hawaii. Here it's done in the summertime. And uh, really valuable resource. Salt changed the course of world history, of human history. So um, the reason we can make cheese and all those wonderful things is because people use salt.